Good afternoon, or let's say good morning, good evening, well, it, depending on where you are. My name is Martin Nietzsche and I'm your host tonight or to eat today or today in the morning, whatever you want to have me. And I'm very happy that you are here. And um, we will start in, let's say, one or two minutes. Uh, I see that a lot of people actually are coming on just now. And um, as you are coming from all over the world, I think it would be great if you do what Abby just did and just say hello in the chat and tell us where you are coming from. I want especially somebody coming from Tuvalu, from the Bahamas, or let's say from, I don't know, from somewhere else. So where are you coming from? Please tell us in the chat. Saudi Arabia, I like that one. That's interesting. Hello. Uh, so, give me a second. Here it is. Oh, I'm not in the middle. I have to go. South Africa. Aruba. Aruba was the one I was missing. So, Abby, the next thing we are doing is a hybrid event where we have to be on Aruba and everybody else can stay where they are. So, but we have to be there. Exactly. That's what we are doing. Morocco. I was in Morocco some years ago. It was a fantastic holiday. South Africa sounds nice. Bhutan, that's one of the countries I haven't been to. I would like to go there as well. So it's, it's again, we have Asia already. We have Africa already. We have Europe. We have um, the, the Americas. But now we need, well, we don't have Australia and New Zealand yet. It's probably quite late in Australia and New Zealand. So but maybe have Laos. excuse. But we have Laos. Well, Laos is good as well. Bhutan, and Cambodia. Yes. Cambodia. Cambodia is one of the countries I want to go as well. I've been nearly there, but only nearly. So yeah, it's fantastic. So everybody, I think it's great that you are here. Uh, we are already, well, we are a good number. We have more than 100 registrations today. So a good number of you is here. And I think that we really have an interesting topic. So I would say, Alexander, we should start. Hello to everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this nice globe. Uh, we are very happy to see you here for our next payments dialogue. Uh, if I just said globe, that's a good point because for the first time, this time, we are not using click meeting, we are using um, Zoom. And there's a good reason why we are using Zoom because Today, we will have a simultaneous translation to English. Well, you don't have to translate me. I try to speak at least some English, but we will have a simultaneous in translation to French because part of our today's presentation will be in French, will be then well, translated into English and everything else which is said in English will be translated to French. Um, and I said, Globe, if you want to not hear me directly, but you want to hear the French translation, you click on your globe uh, at the bottom of your screen, well, of the window, and there's a small globe icon. And if you click on that one, you will see that you can have no translation, so you hear whatever you hear. So if you're speaking English and French, everything is all right for you. Or you can click on English or French to get the translation. So easy for you. Um, interesting for Alexandra and Djibouti and me to try to do this in two languages, but we will try to do our very best. So that was just for the beginning. A nice hello to everybody. We are very happy to do that today. And what will we will be doing today? Um, well, to be honest, we are going a little bit deeper into the international money transfer topics. We already started to discuss them a little bit in our last two sessions, but now today we are going really deep into them. Before we are doing this, I would like to ask Alexandra as our program manager for the financial um, services program of the UPU to make a short welcome for the UPU. So Alexandra, over to you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Um, here from the UPU, I'm really glad that all of you could connect and that we will be able to have a, a nice session, um, interesting one for you. Um, we will do, all, do all, all our best for that. So, um, Martin. So now 
uh, jumping into the to the presentations, um, the payments, a bit of the background we had, especially as being at the UPU, we have a long story, history. So payments evolved during during time. Um, first, the first ones and uh, started in the 18th century, um, which were stable until the mid of the 20th century. Actually, people would go to a post office uh, filling in a form, which would then be sent by letter mail to the destination of the beneficiary. There, the beneficiary would get it at his address, go and, co and then go and collect it at the nearest post office. With time and in the 50s, when computers started to be more efficient, more, more power, uh, uh, had more power of processing, um, first the materialization of the former many orders or wire transfers were, were done. This was mainly in banking business at first, so the main, which was not accessible anyway to the uh, less um, wealthy people. So if you were not bankerized, you would not be able to send money abroad. Um, and paper-based money orders continued throughout almost the 80s. Actually, we still have some at the UPU, uh, believe it or not. Uh, with democratization of IT in the late 70s, beginning 80s, throughout the 80s and 90s, money transfer operators started to, to come up with centralized databases, which were connecting their agents through um, through the IT, their IT network, and as such, being able to transfer money through uh, IT systems. This also was part of our evolution at the UPU at a given point in time. We started to develop also our, our systems and uh, dematerialized the money order back in the late 90s, uh, fully electronically. So the transfer over the letter mail was not anymore there. And there actually I can tell a little story that in the beginning, at the very beginning of my working at the post, um, our backup plan was if the IT would not work, we would use the paper-based money orders to as a backup plan, as a security. Then nowadays payments in the uh, beginning of the 2000, mid 2000, 2005, around there, more, uh, payment service started to evolve more. Mobile and car payments are today a reality, um, started then and Actually, now we are driving to peer-to-peer -peer payments where the digital um, distributed ledger technologies and blockchain, uh, based on blockchains and other uh, advanced technologies are the basis for those payments, along with cryptocurrencies, which are not anymore bound to any fiduciary um, uh, currencies. So these are movements that we are seeing now in the future will tell us what will will be happening with those peer-to-peer -peer payments. So in the, with this late evolutions in the past, past uh, years especially, questions started to have to be addressed, like what will be the future of payments in the payment industry? What is the customer behavior in relation to those? Who can afford that? Who can do it? And to find, to seek some possible answers. These are questions that we try to tackle in uh, previous um, present uh, dialogues we had. And here, Martin, I give, uh, give over to you for the next one. Thanks, Alexandra. And I think that we really had a good, uh, good sessions over the last month. So in February, we started with a very interesting one about the future of payment payments. I remember that we had Norbert Gerke from Japan um, as our speaker and he well, I would say he challenged all of us a little bit because uh, the amount of information he gave us in that session was really, really high. And we all had to be on our toes to really get what he was saying. And he gave us a good overview of all the, especially technology changes. We are just all feel in some way, but coming from a strategic side, that one was really interesting. And in March, we had a, a good talk of uh, Sergei uh, Dukalski and me uh, about the evolution and revolution of uh, the payment systems. 
most interestingly, I think from a consumer's perspective, because um, we all look at that normally from a company's perspective, from our own company's perspective. But if you look at that, what is actually evolving and revolving at the moment, it's very interesting to see that from a consumer's perspective. And today I would say, we are bringing both of these things together. We are bringing the over, uh, overview from how is international money transfer done um, uh, in a modern way, but how does this work for the consumer in a simplified way together? And we will have a presentation from Alexandre about um, how this is done um, with, uh, money, uh, with post transfer. And then we will have a presentation from Djibouti um, they will tell us about how they implemented this system in Djibouti and we will have some final overlook about the technical components of this with Alexandra. Saying this, the name of this series is Payments Dialogue and not Payments Monologue. So while we are telling you a little bit about uh, international money transfer in the next uh, half an hour, um, it would be great to get into a dialogue with you. So, but uh, to be honest, the dialogue means always at least two people. So um, we could try to get a dialogue with you, but we need you to get a dialogue with us. So whenever you have a question, please write it down in the chat. Um, and we are happy to, to see your questions in the chat. We might even um, later on make a question and answer session and you will be able to ask your question in person if you would like to do that. So we are happy to get your questions so that we are getting in a dialogue, uh, which is very important for Alexander to me and me, uh, not to only tell you things, but to hear a little bit from you and your challenges as well. So saying that, Alexander, I would say, let's go into your topic about post-transfer and how you developed the post-transfer trademark over the last years. Thank you, Martin. So the post-transfer trademark, the, as many of you know, the trademark of the UPU for postal payment services. A bit of a history. It was created back in the, in the, uh, on a, upon a decision of the, our councils in 2013. It was a quite long journey with the creation of a post-transfer logo first and um, also the, the, the purpose of this tra trademark and the UPU reacted on this is when you were coming back to what I was saying before uh, regarding the, the, um, the history on money orders, paper based money orders, there you would not need a trademark actually, because you just would need to know that the post is doing it. You would go and fill out the form and send it. The one who receives it would go to, the, to his post office as he would know that it, it's, a, it's the post office trading it. Um, with the dematerialization of transactions, of payments, when you send a, 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 a payment, your beneficiary will have to know where to go. So there the trademark becomes of much more importance. And this was why the decision was taken in the direction of the UPU to create this trademark for the benefit of, of its community. So we started with the creation of a post-transfer logo. It was not easy, um, believe me. Um, and if you see the logo, it's uh, the chain or two hands put together. In, um, with the colors uh, of financial services, of um, uh, most uh, financial services around the world, uh, the blue and many are yellow or uh, red. So that's why we integrated the orange. So then the, after this, the registration, a worldwide registration of the trademark started. There are some centralized systems which after have to be also um, um, confirmed by each country anyway. So this is a, quite a, a process. And then we created with us the Postal Payments, uh, first the Post Transfer Group and now called Postal Payment Services User Group, which is tasked with the development of the Post Transfer, not only the trademark, but all the payments uh, that go along with it. 
this group was also in charge and uh, with our support developed all the development materials and promotional materials that uh, that were um, that were that were um, that go along and i will show you in short in parallel to have a quality of service and as you know it's a chain in as in our logo the weakest chain is the quality you get uh, in the, in the chain. So, if you have, if you want to have a good quality, you have to to be sure that this is th throughout all your network. So the quality of service standards and tools were developed to support this. And finally, we became we came up with the deployment of the trademark like, um, a few a few a few a couple of years ago. So this is also still in progress with eight the countries joining every day the the postal payment service user group as i was uh, ma manage as managing this this the, the payment services within the upu um, is supported by our financial services team uh, at the upu of course um, with the quite uh, interesting results so countries in all over in all regions are joining and adhering to this to, to, to our trademark um, we many of them have to rebrand their 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 um, their uh, payments naming so from prior uh, used names like money orders or Mandant um, electronic international or IMO or whatever they were called so they have to do this effort to change, uh, which is a big effort to change their um, all their their uh, look and feel of their payment services they're offering under the UPU. So some early adopters, we have Djibouti, Senegal or Moldova. Uh, with Djibouti, we will see what they did in the past few years later on. The this postal payment services user group is all, is all constituted by by members, of course, of the of uh, of uh, designated operators or countries of the UPU. Um, it's free, and those that are members to this group have can use the trademark uh, by for free. It's included within their membership. All the others that are not there can, of course, use it also. But there will be some license costs include uh, co uh, allocated to it. Um, the support and development of the trademark was uh, was done also by the Postal Payment Services user group by creating all the promotional material, the videos I will be showing you in, a, in short, and also the exchange with partners and uh, many more. So some of the promotional materials that were created, we have, uh, for instance, the cover of a flyer or uh, um, a poster. Um, those that wish to use the post transfer trademark in our community, they have access to, to a few uh, images. They can customize it. We support them in doing these merchandising and uh, uh, promotional materials. Uh, we have examples of mobile payment solutions, which integrates the logo uh, where we also provide the the front screen or the logo in, a, in the USB key in in a, in other merchandising as well as uh, uh, some uh, flags or uh, uh, identifiers for the location where you can find your 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 uh, the place where you can transfer over post transfer use post transfer. So the group has also created this explanatory video. So we have two of them. One is in is for um, the, the operator itself and for more institutional uh, use, while another one is more uh, uh, created to be used vis-a-vis um, -vis customers. These videos are available in English, French, um, Spanish, and Russian already. They are customizable to any other language, and we will be happy to support you in doing though in doing so. So, if you bear with me, I will be playing the 
the first one in English. The second one, the customer one, I will be play, uh, the video will be in French so that uh, our audience, the Franco uh, in, uh, in French, will be having also this uh, this experience. What is post transfer all about? Post Transfer is a global postal money transfer service based on an international treaty established by the Universal Postal Union. It allows consumers to send and receive money internationally. Technically, Post Transfer links posts or other designated operators to the UPU's international financial system, a high quality software application designed for the real time exchange of international electronic postal money orders. Commercially, post transfer is a complete business opportunity and a trademark for the provision of globally recognized and trusted electronic postal payment services. How does post transfer work? A customer deposits money to send abroad at a post office or via the internet or a mobile device. The payment is sent via the secure UPU money transfer system to the destination country. The beneficiary in the destination country can collect the money from a local post office or through various other channels. Additionally, domestic payments can be provided and partners such as e-retailers can be integrated into the network as well. What makes Post Transfer unique? Post Transfer is affordable. It has very competitive prices and has no hidden fees. The post transfer service is accessible in more than 100,000 branches in over 50 countries, and this is growing every day. All transfers are sent via our reliable and secure platform. Post transfer is also fast. Funds are received within a maximum of two hours, guaranteed. Finally, post transfer can be easily implemented and enables partners around the world to offer a state-of-the-art money transfer service to all its customers. Join the Post Transfer family now and offer an innovative online payment service for everybody. Post Transfer, your trust counts. So back again, I hope you could hear it well. Uh, I enjoyed it for sure. I always enjoy them. And now I will be playing the one of for the customers. Vous cherchez un moyen rapide et bon marché d'envoyer de l'argent à de la famille ou des amis à l'étranger Avec Post Transfert, le service de transfert d'argent de la Poste, vous pouvez envoyer et recevoir de l'argent à l'international. Rendez-vous simplement dans le bureau de poste le plus proche. Montrez votre carte d'identité et indiquez le nom du bénéficiaire et le montant que vous souhaitez envoyer. On vous donnera un code de transfert. Indiquez ensuite le code de transfert au bénéficiaire. Le paiement sera disponible immédiatement dans le pays de destination. Celui-ci n'aura qu'à se rendre dans le bureau de poste le plus proche et prouver son identité pour recevoir l'argent que vous lui avez envoyé. C'est aussi facile que ça. Post Transfert est abordable. Il n'y a sans aucun frais caché. Le montant que vous envoyez est le montant reçu par le bénéficiaire. Aucune déduction. Le service Post Transfert est disponible. Il est proposé dans plus de 100 000 points de contact et plus de 50 pays. Et le réseau ne cesse de s'étendre. Tous les transferts sont réalisés grâce à notre plateforme fiable et sécurisée. Et Post Transfert est rapide. Les fonds sont réceptionnés en deux heures maximum garantie. Essayez-le. Post Transfert, votre confiance avant tout. So these were the the the, the two uh, the two videos that we had for you. Uh, of course, this one for customers cash oriented. Um, in many countries, we have. Um, the ability not to go to cash in or cash out uh, in cash you can do it through your mobile and smartphone um, uh, devices so it depends of course how they have set up the system so martin back to you thanks alexandra i think that was a good and interesting um, presentation about what is possible today as a post And I think there's a big business uh, chance and opportunity in there for a lot of postal operators all over the world to use this as an offer for their clients. Um, 
I already told everybody. So if you have questions, please ask your questions. We are happy to answer them. Well, Alexandra is happy to answer them. I probably cannot answer as a moderator. Uh, but beside of that, um, if you do not have any questions yet, I would say, Alexandra, let's go in the direction of our uh, Djibouti uh, presentation, because they, as Alexandra just told us, is our, one of our one of the, the first users of this service. And we, we, we were very happy that Mohamed Ali um, said that he will be able to present um, what they in Djibouti uh, did about this service. Um, that was clear until, well, two days ago. And then he had to, uh, to tell us that he has to go on a short notice meeting in the ministry. And like it is in our world, the ministers are always more important uh, than everybody else. So he really had to go there. But he did a, a long night uh, and he made a full presentation with a full voiceover. So we are very happy that we can share his presentation with his personal voice and his explanations. Uh, I just see that Usman is asking the first question. So um, we will answer that question maybe um, now. So he is questioning, is this only for international transfer or can this be used locally as well? Oh, that was Jessica, not Osman. So Alexander. Is uh, post transfer also able to, to do payments locally or is it just for international payments? Yes, post transfer, well, the, we at the UPU, we rule over uh, international money or uh, transactions for international payment services. But the, and post transfer is for international, it was created for international, but of course you can use it if you uh, apply the license for the UPU. Uh, for the use of the post transfer trademark, you can also use it uh, for domestic purpose for your postal payments at domestic level. There is no. In, when we no saw the presentation that. about the, the the video about the the commercial video, that was told that you can use it, for example, locally as well to pay in a in an online shop, and that could be, of course, as well if if you pay that one locally. Yes. Uh, the, the other question we had from Usman was about what is the difference between post transfer and IFS? Um, I will answer that in French, as he put it in French. Uh, la différence entre post transfer. Uh, the difference between uh, post transfer and IFS is, in fact, there's not much of a difference. Uh, IFS is the system, stricto sensu, that we use at the UPU for the transfer of money. As regards the post transfer, this is much more than that. In fact, it is the brand for international money transfers. So the brand that is known by the consumers, that is known by everybody when they want to send money, when they want to make international money transfers, or when you want to do that locally, money transfers are possible locally as well. But the technology, the underlying technology behind that to uh, facilitate uh, the transfers is uh, IFS uh, or the IFS applications, as well as other systems of uh, centralized uh, database uh, that we use at uh, UPU and that we might talk about uh, in a little more detail a little later. I have a slide on, on that. That's the main difference. Uh, so post transfer is the brand, IFS is the system behind it, the underlying application that supports these operations. But there's more than IFS. Uh, there are other systems as well. And, um, I'm sure we will answer more questions later on. So I would say let's go into the presentation from Djibouti. Let's have a short look what uh, Mohamed Ali is telling us, and then we will answer more questions and get, can, can get in discussion, discussion with all of you. Okay. Yep. Madame, mademoiselle, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to make this presentation to you to talk to you about uh, the post office of Djibouti as regards to the promotion of the post transfer label or brand. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not with you to make a direct presentation. Uh, Due to other commitments, I would like to first of all thank uh, Ms. Abibosa and Mr. Alexander Rodriguez, who have given us an opportunity to share with you our experience. I'm convinced that this uh, type of exchange strengthens confidence between uh, the partners in the postal world. Now, coming back to the presentation itself and the evolution of the post transfer service, as regards to this uh, service, It is uh, very important to, to talk about the background, to tell you what the situation was before the implementation of post transfer. So, as you can see, looking at the slide, uh, the Djibouti Post Office adopted in 1990 the International Money Order, MEI. And uh, this, uh, in the context of the uh, postal telegram, this was the forerunner of post transfer, in fact. Uh, and then a Djibouti Post signed a number of bilateral mm, contracts with uh, several countries, including France, Tunisia, and Madagascar as partners. Since then, uh, we have encountered no difficulties at all. The system works wonderfully well. And now, for the last 30 years, we have been using the IFS application, which was mentioned by Alexander a few moments ago. And we, when necessary, we do the updating of this application, the IFS application. But apart from that, we have no difficulty at all as regards uh, the use of this service. We have uh, developed uh, a partnership uh, Subsequently, we signed a number of uh, contracts uh, with uh, several other countries. So these are bilateral contracts. Uh, we uh, signed a contract with uh, Senegal in particular, as well as Morocco, Benin. And each time we uh, chose the corridors according to the needs. Uh, of the population of Djibouti. And uh, the crucial element here with respect to the choices that we make is, of course, the diaspora. That is, uh, the Djibouti citizens who live in these countries and either other countries as well as the student population. This is something that is very important. Uh, if there is a large number of students in these countries, uh, well, then we target these countries, we open corridors. Uh, as regards uh, uh, Djibouti, this is a very small republic of 1 million inhabitants. Uh, and taking this into consideration, we try and open corridors to be able to provide our services and to be able to serve our users and the diaspora in particular, as I mentioned. As regards the Djibouti, Djibouti Post, uh, uh, has been using uh, the post uh, transfer service at the national level and continues to do so. So this is used nationally as well as internationally. And I can tell you that uh, the IFS underlying application works perfectly well. This has meant that we haven't had to develop our own applications or our own software in parallel. And this has enabled us uh, to offer a high quality service at a very reasonable cost. All of the networks of the Djibouti Post uses uh, the post transfer service and its IFS application. Uh, 
comment dire, c'est d'ailleurs euh, euh, fait remarquer lors euh, du pic, surtout les, la période la plus difficile. And uh, during the worst time of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, during this period, we worked uh, very hard through its values, uh, true to its values rather, thanks to the Post Transfer Service. Djibouti Post was able to provide basic financial services uh, to people, both citizens and refugees in rural areas, uh, far from the major cities at a time when the entire country was under lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So the citizens, We're able to benefit from the service as well as the refugees uh, that we have welcomed on our natural uh, on our national territory. And during this period of time, the uh, Djibouti Post Office, in line with the principles of financial inclusion, was able to distribute uh, cash to a large population of refugees, uh, uh, to 15,000 households. Uh, from the UNHCR refugee camps of Ali Ade, Hol Hol, and Markazi. It was also able to distribute pensions to 6,000 pensioners living in the uh, distant regions of our country. And the transfer of funds was also used for more than 8,000 public and private sector employees who wished to send part of their wages, their salaries, uh, to their families. So you see that there's a widespread use of the service in our country for various purposes. These are some pictures uh, that were taken when cash was distributed to UNHCR refugees in the various camps I mentioned earlier. Uh, especially during the COVID uh, pandemic and uh, the lockdown, well, we set up uh, mobile teams and these teams uh, traveled to the refugee camps uh, to be able to distribute cash to the refugees. And you can see that uh, the post transfer brand or label is very visible here on this uh, slide. You have refugees, but you have uh, the post uh, transfer brand that is extremely visible. And obviously the refugees enjoyed very much the service provided to them. As regards uh, the post transfer brand, as of the time it was officially promoted by the Djibouti Post Office, and the brand license was signed in February 2019, we set in place a communication campaign to popularize this brand name. The people of Djibouti until then were used to the old name which was uh, the express money order. And of course, we wanted to make uh, the population of our country more familiar with this new brand. And it is for this reason that we launched this communication campaign using various promotional materials in order to reach uh, the largest uh, audience possible. The objective of uh, this uh, campaign, using posters on mail delivery vehicles, printing of kakamonos and flyers, uh, was to get uh, all of the population of Djibouti to become more familiar with the post transfer brand and our users and clients in particular. Now, what were the targets in this communication campaign, will you have this information on the screen? There are direct and indirect targets. Uh, as regards to the direct uh, targets, uh, these are people living in rural communities or in areas uh, that are difficult to reach. Well, people living in faraway villages, uh, those types of users, uh, that was the first uh, target of the post-transfer service. 
we also have as a target the civil servants and private sector employees who have family and parents living in uh, faraway uh, regions. The third target, and here we're talking about the international component of uh, post-transfer. Here we're targeting the parents of students who are in a country with which a Djibouti Post has a partnership uh, relationship, a bilateral contact contract, uh, namely those countries uh, that I mentioned before. And they include uh, Senegal, Morocco, France, Tunisia, Benin, and Madagascar. Aside from these three targets, uh, we also have uh, the Djibouti students, and this is an indirect target. Um, why is it an indirect target? Because it is the parents back home in Djibouti that actually send money to their student children abroad. It is uh, for this reason that uh, we have uh, designed or chosen uh, certain countries and certain embassies uh, to be able to take to part this in across. this work. So what was our advertising campaign? As I explained earlier, we used different media and we used different types of promotional material. We used flyers and posters on our various displays. And leaflets and flyers were made available in all of the post offices. We also put up posters and we put stickers on all of our official post vehicles. So the pickup trucks, the vans, all of our vehicles so that we made this trademark, this post-transfer trademark visible all over the country. We also use the radio. We used the national Djibouti radio to broadcast a specific message in the three languages of the country, French, Arabic, Somali. And of course, Afa, because Somali and Afa are local languages. So in fact, there are four languages that are used in the country, but there are two official languages, Arabic and French. So we used all of those languages. We also used the internet and more specifically, we used our Facebook account and on the Facebook account, every time we organized an outreach activity or we did anything that was related to the product or the post-transfer trademark, we posted it we posted messages, we posted videos, we posted information on these social networks. We wanted to share all of our news with our followers, those who follow the Facebook page of Post Djibouti. We also used other channels for promoting this trademark. For example, we placed leaflets in all the letter boxes and they were also sent to all the public and private partners that we work with and who've signed up to our customized delivery service. This is an example of the design that we prepared with our design team 
we wanted to highlight the post-transfer trademark and the product more generally. And we wanted to make sure that we highlighted the new name for it to be recognizable. So as I said, it was sent out to everyone and it was posted on our Facebook page. There were also stickers placed on the side of our vehicles. This is an example of the vans that we use, but we also have pickup trucks and service vehicles cars on which we place these promotional stickers. This is an example of what we public account of Poste de Djibouti. And this is the design that we came up with for our outreach activities. We wanted to make sure that the trademark is clearly visible alongside all of our usual visual representation. So as I said, it was a multi-channel, multimedia campaign, and it was a way for us to promote post-transfer throughout the country, to popularize it. I think that we've managed to raise awareness. Our outreach program worked well, and our customers have started talking about post-transfer. They no longer say MEI. And the post-transfer logo has now been added to our portfolio of products, as you can see on this slide. On that, I would like to thank you all for your attention. I've finished my presentation. I would like to thank Mohamed uh, for giving us this great presentation, even if it was only done uh, via uh, uh, recording. He was very unhappy that he couldn't be here in person, but he talked uh, for a longer time with Alexandra. So if you have any question, questions, I'm quite sure that Alexandra can answer them, or if not, we will um, uh, give them to, to Mohamed and then we might be able to, to give you an answer a little bit later. Uh, before we going into the question answer session, I think Alexander prepared one or two slides about the technical part. And as we already got some questions about uh, the IF, uh, IFS and about the, the technical part of, of uh, post transfer, I think Alexander over to you so that you give, can give us a little bit of background uh, for this interesting technology. Thank you, uh, Martin. So regarding the technology, and as I was saying uh, before, the background is the uh, mid 90s, where our postal technology center here at the UPU created the IFS software suite. Since the 2016 UPU Instable Congress, we changed a bit all the uh, changes were put into place for or started to be put in place for changing our, our IT support, IT environment for post transfer. With and this is included the creation of a centralized database, the UPUIP. So instead of being decentralized, if you want, when the former in the former technology, each IFS user would have his own database locally and would then exchange messages between those databases. Um, now we are moving to um, centralized database here at the UPU. Um, where all transactions are put in and pulled out. This enables real-time transactions, really real-time transactions. It's a matter of seconds. 
if a, if we want to do the test, we can put a person in one post office sending the money and the beneficiary in the opposite part of the world at the post office, for instance, or at his mobile uh, mobile uh, device to get to collect that money. It's instant. Uh, the connections to the to this UPU database are through web services APIs. So if you have your own domestic system, you just need to uh, adopt those APIs to be able to uh, talk to our database. Uh, of course, all of this is backward compatible because we still did not migrate all or, or not all our um, partners have migrated. So if those, uh, like the cases, um, uh, Djibouti was telling us, it's um, they are still using IFS and they can exchange with those that already are connected to the new database while they are waiting for their migration. Um, in the future also, the IFS software suite will be, or is already available in the cloud. So uh, in, uh, from now, uh, uh, you already can uh, adopt post transfer and the systems that go along uh, without actually buying any server, any PC, anything. It just needs to connect your the PC you are using with a web browser to be able to access to the full functional technology for technological functionalities of post transfer and behind it. Um, I will not go into two details in this uh, uh, slide, but here you can see the UPUIP as the interconnection platform, the former network which are connected to each other. Uh, we have also a partner with partners a uh, bridge with Eurogyro and all the systems are uh, seamlessly interconnected. So those that use the old IFS systems, if you want to call them, they can uh, also uh, exchange with those that are in, uh, already connected directly to the UPOIP uh, represented by this link. Uh, not only the technology is there, but also, for instance, the clearing, the settlement, automated settlement system is connected to the systems, as well as the quality of service systems, like the inquiry system, or for, uh, and that's very important for, for, for many of you um, to monitor your performance. So from QCS Finance, you can get uh, not only uh, um, uh, pre-prepared pre reports, but you also can export all the data to your Excel file and manage it to PowerPoint presentations for whomever you want, for instance, with nice pie charts and to and, char and charts to monitor you the evolution of your of your uh, service. Of course, also security. All of this is supported by security solutions, which uh, guarantee that only those that are. Uh, are authorized to connect to our systems can do so. So this, Martin, in short, is my last slide. Uh, so we can go probably for the question and answers uh, that I see already somewhere quite interesting. Quite interesting, yes. Uh, thanks, Alexandra. I'm very happy that you did not go deeper into this chart, to be honest. I think that was the most complicated one we saw. Uh, is it complicated to, to implement post transfer? This one looks for me like that, but on the other side, you said uh, you just have to implement some API services and then you can implement it. So what would you say? Is it complicated to, to implement post transfer in a country? No, not at all. Uh, even the, of course, the systems behind it, they might have some complexity, but the complexity is actually there to simplify everything to those that adopt it. So if you don't, as I said, if you don't have any system at all, or you don't want to invest in systems, you just use the, the IFS cloud solution and you connect, you are ready to run um, from the technology part. Of course, you have to set up your operations and do your marketing as Djibouti well explained what they did. So that's inherent to that. And But the setup, I would say a week would go 
if you are really prepared for that. A week? That yeah. sounds interesting. So you have some countries who have already done it, like Senegal, I think you said, you said Moldova, you, of course, Djibouti. Um, what is your experience uh, from your point of view? What is um, the criteria? What are the criteria for a successful implementation? There are quite a few of them, but the, probably the most important one is the willing, the willingness to do that, to have support from your management. So top management at the post um, should be aware of what you want to do and uh, support that. From that on, there is no big uh, hurdle anymore because uh, operations, we have a full set of operational guides um, and uh, as we are telling also today about promotional material. So those things are really facilitated to implement this, this service. Um, and the basics here are the, the, the interest of doing it, the willing to, to join a good team. It doesn't mean it has to be a big team. It can be a few people in key, in key, key areas, like, of course, IT support somehow, the marketing people, and the operations, and then to motivate your, your tellers, your post people, post men and post women that are in the forefront to the customers. So they will do miracles if you want for your business. And if that is put into place, then things go really smoothly and fast. This sounds really good. There's a question or more like an idea coming from Isaid from Morocco. He had the idea to create some kind of UPU currency in a way uh, as a as a backbone for for international services. I'm I'm not sure whether this is going a little bit above cross transfer. I think it's more strategic question for the UPU. But uh, did you see it, Alexander? Yes, it's it's something that we actually we had something similar the D, the SDR or DTS. Um, which um, was implemented in the, uh, previously for many others. Uh, we are actually talking about adopting cryptocurrencies or some kind of cryptocurrencies. The idea of even creating a cryptocurrency of the UPU is not too far-fetched, at least in the discussion basis. And this idea is also, uh, we would, it would be very interesting to, to exchange with this Aid um his ideas on this because we could uh, well the more the more people we get with new ideas the better the outcome is so is it that would be great to just send alexandra an email perhaps and get a dialogue with them get in touch with them do we have any other questions i i saw several ones where we were thinking about questions so there are two possibilities. If you have a question, you can just uh, put your microphone and your video on. Well, microphone only would work as well. And you are able to ask your question. On the other side, uh, you could as well just uh, type it down in the chat and we will be happy to answer these questions. So as we have not very much time left, I think it would be great if you have a question, just ask it. Um, before you're doing that, uh, I will ask uh, Alexander another question. Alexander, you seem to me as a person who really loves cost transfer. Uh, you seem to be really, really standing behind that system, per partly because perhaps you are one of the invest uh, inventors of it. But on the other side, uh, why do you really believe in that system? What is it that makes it so special for you? Um, well, I'm not in the inventor of post transfer, nor nor of IFS. That's 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 that, that's the champions are other colleagues of the UPU, but uh, I'm really uh, for me it's um, it's more than just a brand or just a, a, a payment solution. It's it's actually all around posts. Posts can really do a big big difference, and the postal network has done it before. If you go to history. Uh, back after the World War, um, it was posts that helped develop the countries again. Um, fortunately, we are not in there, but now we saw it with the pandemic. Posts really did, did, did the difference, not only in, in, in payments, 
they did it also in, of course, in logistics, but in payments, as Djibouti was also um, uh, talking about it, they could use the service to ease the life of their of their fellow fellow citizens, um, and this is really something that's uh, that's um, beyond description, if you want. For me, it's something I'm passionate with. So posts could not only do themselves something good with offering that, this service, they could do something good for society as well, in a way. We got another question from uh, Usmana, he is quite operationally asking whether it would be able, uh, they would be able to do a multilateral contract with post transfer. Yes, we have a multilateral agreement in place, besides the, the traditional bilateral ones. Um, which can be signed and the countries that sign it with they they can ex start exchanges between themselves immediately um, so yes the, the multilateral agreement is there and it includes post transfer it includes um, the whole technology everything that sounds good sounds like a jump start into using that system for a country Alexander, thanks a lot for for this really interesting presentation. Um, another thanks is going to Djibouti for giving us their very interesting presentation as well. So um, I think I would like to start to start a dialogue now. Um, and I have two things I might uh, I think might be interesting for you to to get a dialogue uh, with. The first one would be to get into a dialogue. Oh, there's another question. Before I'm telling this, let's get me um, Is Are there options for the United States to link the post transfer? Is it possible to go there? No, not yet, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so they, uh, the United States, they are part of our network, but not through post transfer or through the digital network, if you want. They are one of so, the few that still exchange paper-based money orders. So that would be coming in the next years, hopefully. And um, then we have, yeah, now it's coming, something is coming from Madagascar. Thanks, John, because she is asking whether they should, could have the email address of Djibouti because they would like to get in touch. And I really like that one, John, because you're giving me a per perfect chance to start some dialogue here. So yes, of course, we can put you in touch with Djibouti. Um, I think Alexandre will, will get in touch with you and he will connect you with the, with the colleagues from Djibouti because actually that's what we really want to do. We want to get in touch with all of you. We want to discuss the possibilities of post transfer with you and how UPU can help you to set up the services in your country. So wh whoever um, is interested in this service from you, just send a short email or a short message to Alexander or to Abby or to me, to whomever, and we will connect you and we will be happy to answer any questions you might have and to help you to set up this service. Beside of that, we will have, of course, another session, another dialogue, another payment dialogue, probably in September or October after the summer break. We have some interesting topics in our minds, but again, if you have any idea where you say, okay, that's an interesting topic and I would like to have a talk about that one or have some expert talking about that, or yourself, you are an expert about some topic um, in, in payment dialogue. So please send us an email or send us a message, especially to Abby, who is organizing all this. Uh, thanks to Abby. And yes, here she is. She's laughing. She's, she's still happy to get some messages from you. And we will be happy um, to include you or your ideas in our next payment dialogue. So the, the, the hour is already over again. It's already very, very fast, to be honest. Thanks, Abby, for organizing that. Thanks a lot to Alexandra and to Djibouti for staying here and giving us interesting presentations and making all of this possible. And I think it's four past five. I have to say goodbye already and to say thanks for attending. And I hope to see you again at the next um, post transfer payment dialogue somewhere in, well, early autumn. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you all.
Bye bye. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Jolie coiffure, Alexandre. Jolie coiffure. Hi, Chadley. Oh, Abby. <laughs> oh, well. Bye bye. <laughs> OK. Merci, c'était très bien. Hello. It was a very good presentation. Thank you very much. Very enjoyable. Merci beaucoup, tout le monde. Thank you. Merci, au revoir tout le monde. Thank you and goodbye to all of you. And goodbye from the interpreters as well. Thank you, Alexander. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, you for your support. support. Thank you very much and goodbye.